Hi guys, welcome to the video. This is my solo run of the Chasm of Screams, which is the final quest you've got to do for the Thorn. It's basically Savathun on steroids. Uh, some tricky modifiers. Uh, there is one which increases the elemental damage of all Arc Solar Void, so all elemental damage is increased. Blackout, so no radar, melee attacks do more damage. And it's iron. The enemies have more health and don't stagger or something like that. Just a nightmare. <laughs> Just a nightmare. So we're doing it on the Hunter. We're starting on Night Stalker. I have Bygones, Tartar Gaze, which is a Arc Sniper. It's the Forge Sniper. And the Whisper. And I ha obviously I've got Orpheus Rig on. I will be changing to Gunslinger. And then I'll be changing to Bolton Tree of the Void Walker. And I'll be changing helmets. We'll be putting, when we go Gunslinger, I'll be putting on Celestial Nighthawk and then we'll change to the Graviton forfeit. Now this isn't a flawless run. I did have a death at the boss. Uh, working out a strategy. I'll, exp I'll tell you exactly where I died when we get there. I've cut the death out, obviously, because it was just, it was another eight minutes on top of this or something. So, the, the kind of the difference is you've, at the start, you've got these four Shriekers. You've got one there, one in between there. I take them both out, double hit from the, the Sniper. Now, I, I went with an Arc Sniper because it's predominantly Arc Shields. There are some Void. We've got the Whisper for Solar ones. But, uh, yep, it's 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 a very, very... It's a good strategy. It's a very simple strategy, I believe. If, if you follow the strategies, you will... If you follow the explanation... More than likely, anybody that wants to do it will be, you know, stand a, a better than average chance of getting it done. But if you just want to see the run, and enjoy the show. So, I take out the first three Shriekers, then I take the Wizard out. And then I activate the fourth Shrieker, and then we take these Acolytes. Once we've took the Acolytes, we'll activate the door. I think there's six Acolytes here. We'll activate the door, and then we'll go over the stairs. And we'll take the rest of the adds. This whole area until the door is ready to open will take over by the stairs. So my Bygones is masterworked for orb generation. It's got Rampage on it, which is really good for when you get times three, especially when there's a, a heap of ads coming. But I, I figured just for the, the, the throw, uh, it would be much better to have, I'm not an auto rifle fan, but just the pulse rifle. I've become a bit of a, I have become a bit attached to my bygones, to be fair. I used to always use Midnight Coup, and I still enjoy running the hand cannon. In fact, since I earned the thorn today, I went straight out on and done a heroic story mission just to see what it was like, and I think I'm going to do a nightfall run with it, to be fair. Uh, so, take all these throw. You will get, you'll get, you, we, took the, we took the wizard. As soon as the wizard appeared on top of the belt, and we took the wizard, you will get an audio prompt. It's like a scream when the knights are coming. And when you, when you get that scream, there's normally one throw, one or two throw left up. So as you can see, I take the first one as soon as he drops. Dodge reload to reload. And then I look to see if I can get any damage on the second one. We were lucky here. Broke his shield. He stopped. When we hit him, really lucky to get the kill because, you know, normally I, I normally just break his shield uh, at that point. So we were pretty lucky there. Doesn't matter if... If uh, you don't kill the knight, if you just go across to the left of where we are now, you can snipe him from across this area if you don't kill him. So my suggestion is you could probably tether here. Tether where all those those thrall are coming from. I didn't really want to waste my tether since most of them were down, but you can if you're, if you're not confident or you just want that added protection. You can use your tether when you get it. So just clear the, air, clear the area of it. Once you... Once you've cleared all the acolytes, the thrall will then start to run towards the door. When you see them do that, if you haven't killed all the explorers, you know that the area is clear. So now we've got, I didn't use my tether, so we still have a full tether. I'm going to activate the door by running up to it and tether inside the door. What that does is, obviously, grabs the first wave of ads, grabs the second wave of ads, and then when you run into the second, this, this area, dodge reload straight back out of it. And it will more than likely grab the third wave of thrall, giving you, giving you your tether back. Once you've cleared all the thrall, 
get your whisper out. As, as I say, as I, as I, my mantra is always use different weapons to drop heavy, drop special, but make sure you're always reloaded. So it's five whisper shots to kill this ogre. So I didn't really want to waste two whisper shots. So I just switched and uh, took him out with the, the sniper. The sniper has a boss spec on it for additional damage. So what we've done is we've thrown that smoke at the night. He moved, but once I hit him, he dodged straight back into the smoke. So kind of pointless, but we're not complaining. Now, there's a couple of kind of tricky areas in this. There's like two main encounters, but there's a couple of tricky areas. This area coming up, not with the four acolytes, the part after that, that can be quite tricky. It's not super difficult, it's just can be tricky. So we'll take these acolytes for, you can, if you ha if you chose not to smoke that night, I never, you know, the times I was testing this, uh, this was my, this was my first attempt today, uh, and I died at the boss, as I say, I'll tell you guys where I died, uh, but when I was testing it out yesterday, I was really close to getting the strategy yesterday. Uh, it was the the point I couldn't, the thing I couldn't do, because I believe in transparency. I believe in you guys understanding the process. The part I couldn't do was I could kill all the ads. I could get Savathun in, in your cocoon state, uh, kill the knights, all pretty standard stuff. I just couldn't work out a decent enough way to get up on the platform and slam Savathun to kill her. I got to that point so many times yesterday. So, uh, I died in this run the first first time I died being greedy. I cleared everything. We were just at the knights. We were just about to act to get the knights to come out and I died being greedy running for an orb. So, take your time. You're in no rush. That is the biggest thing I would say to you guys. You're not in any rush. You're not timed. You know, it's, it's, it's to make sure that you are safe before attacking. I thought that was it had gone. I did read on Twitter that, that there's an issue with damage lag. I think it was Glad that put it up. Basically, enemies were getting their health back when you killed them. And he actually tweeted Bungie about it. And it's ha it, it happened to me twice. I thought, I'm not even sure if that wizard actually went down. I thought the wizard had went down. But it happens with the ogre. I snipe him. I bet if his health comes back, and then I snipe him again, and he dies. And with the amount of health that he actually had, he shouldn't have he shouldn't have died from that second snipe. So basically, the first snipe lagged out the damage. That's, that, that could be a potential issue. So anyway, as you've seen, I took out as many of the acolytes safely as I could, and then tethered the big knight. Put a couple of snipes on the big knight, shares the damage. If you're lucky, you'll kill one of the the wizards and then with my my sniper it's taking me about th three three shots to put down the shield and then then i'll kill it so once you've done that once you've cleared this area go up activate the the next these waves they, they can be tricky because they've got tons of cover to hide in so if you tether they'll start walking away you can snipe them easy peasy then pick the orb up, dodge reload into this wall, pick up the orb as soon as your dodge, as soon as it prompts on the screen that you can grab it, and it's normally about halfway through your dodge, you can just start dodging and then pick the orb up as you're dodging. And that's this area done. We move on to uh, the open ogre area. There's a little bit, a couple, what's it, five acolytes and a knight, then it's the, the open ogre area. That is the what I've always classed in Savathun as the first main encounter. These are all little skirmishes, little pockets of ads that you're clearing. The, in fact, for ages, when I first started doing Savathun, I classed the opening area as you know, one of the most difficult. Until I got used to it and realised it wasn't very difficult. But some of you guys might, might find it challenging. Not that you can't beat it. Just like, oh Jesus, this is the opening area. So I think it's got one of the trickiest opening areas for a strike. So take all the take all the the acolytes out. I smoked the grenade, and as you can see, there was quite a lot of numbers coming. I think the smoke damages the crystals as well. It's the only thing I could think that those numbers were coming off of. It does because it took out that crystal. 
take out the crystals and then there's a box just to our right. Get on the box. You are far enough away from the from the, the ogre that you don't pose a threat and he but he will recognize you're there. So wait until he wait until he moves right out from that right hand pillar and then you can start hitting him. I missed that last crit there. It's no problem, but I don't really like missing crits. What will happen is I'll put a couple of if you can get the three if you do, which I normally do, get the three snipes on him, put four energy snipes in his arm and then he'll eventually once he gets to a certain health i think it's just under his last health bar he'll come back out so kill him and what we're going to do is we're going to go out here dodge reload and tether this wave of ads that are on the ground just in front of us and they're just slightly lower there we go tether grenade and that kills most of the ads that are in the tether it's just the knight kill the knight now you've got some acolytes on your left, but what you're looking out for, what the main kind of protagonists of this area is, you'll have seen one just running past us there. Some arc shielded knights. There's two arc shielded knights. There's an elite and a red bar. They normally go over there. That red bar normally, when you snipe him because of his position, he'll normally, his arc shield will blow up that exploding barrel that's there. Dodge reload. That The, the elite tra decided to push us. It's bad for him because, you know, the wall's a good thing. If, if a knight pushes you, just a normal knight, a, a boomer knight, the knights that put up their shields, the sword knights don't have shields, but the, if a boomer pushes you, once he puts his shield up, that's the perfect time to back away with your sight out and just, as soon as you see the shield going, start hitting him. Because he's got a couple of sec a second where he, he can't react. His shield's coming down, there's already an animation. So we've took all those ads out. Now we're on to the ogre, and there's a whole host of ads up here. So I'm going to try a long range tether. Try. I'm going to hit a long range tether. Prop whisper breathing. I never got the second shot because I was trying to wait for the next wave of ads to spawn in and hoping I could share damage, but it, it, it didn't work. So my sniper's got rampage, so it's doing more damage against the wizard because I'd propped rampage on that. that night so it should take this wizard out and then we'll bust this guy's shield dodge reload and because they've got iron it won't stun them they might do it a bit of a a bit of a side, sidewards a bit of a sidewards dodge when you break their shield but it, it, it won't flinch them so because i've only got two whisper break the shield and then use the second shot to take the wizard now we need to get some heavy and we'll take out as many acolytes from down here as we can before we go at the ogre. The ogre will be round to the left. Kind of, if it's kind of strange, he's got loads of different positions he can go to. and But this is, seems to be a favourable one. It's round to the left. He's on the same level as that acolyte. He's just hiding round to the left. So we'll dodge reload. As you just caught a glimpse of him there. Just to get that ammo. And because he might have moved up now. Hit him once and that's him, he'll go. Don't bother engaging him again until he gets on the stairs. Because once he gets on the stairs, you are far enough away that he won't fire at you. There you go. You see his health go down and come back up. And then the, sec the, the last snipe killed him. With the amount of health it said he had when his health went back up, one snipe from the energy sniper shouldn't have killed him. If the, if it, it looks like it isn't a thing. So if it is Bungie, you need to get on that because that could be problematic in other kind of areas raids and the reckoning and what have you so moving to this area as you can see i've smoked them and grenaded them it's killed the smoke kind of blinded that first one the grenade killed the other the other two and then there was one guy waiting and then take the crystals out this next section is what the, the kind of the, the i suppose this is the the big encounter before the boss because this whole section is linked all the way to the double shrieker. So try and take out this arc shielded knight. If you're unlucky, like I was, you'll take his shield, you'll maybe get hit on him, and then he'll run away into cover. He's not going to come back out until you push closer. So we're going to go for the second knight. Because the last thing we want is to be maneuvering around the map with boomer knights 
melting us down. You can see how much damage they do. So are there any acolytes we can pick off? No, nope. we'll move up here. And we'll take this knight. Now, when, when he does that, he normally comes running back. Normally, the, if, if they don't put a, bub, a, a wall up, they, they, they dodge and then come back to try and attack you. They are much more aggressive, I think, in this strike. Obviously, because that's the modifier. So, took out as many acolytes and, as we needed to. Now, we'll tether the big, the big knight. Now, if you're lucky... Normally, I would throw a grenade as well. I don't know why I didn't this time. Four energy shots, and then I'm going to put... Get the whisper on him just to get him down faster. And he takes the, the wizards. Normally, he takes both wizards... And the knight that's there, and the acolytes, but it's all good. The wizard was half damaged, no shield. Probably could have sniped her, but wants to keep my sniper ammo. And these acolytes to the front left here, they're always there. They, they don't get touched by the tether. So you'll always have two or three waiting there. Now that we've cleared this section, which we have, we'll move up and we'll activate these thrall. Make sure you take out the thrall. Keep an eye on if they split. Because with blackout, the melees are going to be super dangerous. In fact, you're going to see in, in about 60 seconds how, how much damage you can take from a, a, a melee. So I've thrown a grenade at the top of the stairs and then tethered. The tether is designed to capture the exploders, these, these acolytes, and the knight. And then a thrall hits us. That's how dangerous the thrall can be. You really have to, you really have to be careful. As you can see, I picked the orb up, but I wasn't. I don't care about it. I'll come back and get it. It's more important to clear these areas out. So shoot that exploding barrel. It should take nearly all the ads. Now it's 50-50 whether it takes them all. If it doesn't, there'll be one where I just shot, or just hiding to the wall to the right of where I shot. If you want to find out if there's anything there, just shoot the wall. Shoot, shoot the floor where you think it might be if there is one there it'll activate activate him and then he'll come out take this knight now another way you could have done that is you could smoke him you could throw your smoke grenade on him which will disorientate him and take him with a sniper we've had to come back and get the orb because until you take the orb to the end it won't activate the the ogres and you know but again i'm going to take it down it's it's not a timed run i'm not bored about that i just want to activate the next set of ads so what we're going to do is we're going to take this first ogre and then we're going to try and get a tether at the door which will capture any ads but it will capture the second ogre so we don't have to worry about that because it can be quite difficult taking that second ogre out he can be quite uh fussy with his positioning so try and take that exploding barrel out which has done damage on a lot of lot of enemies in there and there, there, there might be some still left alive, but uh, we're going to find that out. We're going to take this ogre inside the room. Got to be careful, because if he pushes, they, they really can hit you hard. So just make sure you, you don't encroach, don't push when you don't have to. You know, Learn a lesson from your old Uncle Mondo, don't get greedy. The enemies are not going to go away. Get you know, be safe. Get, you know, live to fight another day. That type of thing. So we're just putting a couple of shots down at the sides to see if there's any ads there. Once you see the shots hitting the floor, if nothing comes out after about two or three seconds, there's probably nothing there. Nothing there. So now we can go back up and get the orb. But we're also going to try and pick up any kind of special ammo, any ammo we've got lying about. Because when you get into the boss room, you really do want to have as much, as close to as close to full as you can humanly get. Don't go, you know. Don't stop using a type of weapon because you don't, you know, you you don't want to uh, run out of ammunition. So as you can see here, we're taking off the Orpheus rig. We do not need the Orpheus rig now, and we've put on the graviton forfeit, which basically put, makes us stay invisible for longer. Which is more important at this part than the Orpheus rig. As I say, the tether now, we're going to use it for quickness in one part. But it's really not, not important. So as you can see, we've got full everything. 
foot full heavy, sorry, which is it's heavy. I really worry about. I shouldn't. Because for this next set, for the boss section, we basically, as long as we don't miss any shots, we need, we do need, what, full clip, five rounds maybe? So we go, we dodge reload to get behind that left hand pillar, uh, left side, left corner of the left hand pillar, because the shrieker can, the right hand shrieker can still shoot around the wall. Then we wait for our invisibility to recharge, which I have a Paragon mod on, which increases my class ability regeneration. So we get it back pretty quickly. Once it's back, reload, uh, dodge reload, and slam. Now, if you've got your tether, which you should have when you get here, tether these two knights, throw a grenade at one, smoke the other, and watch them kill each other. Nothing more satisfying than watching two wizards kill each other. Now we're going to change to a boss set up which is golden gun single shot of the golden gun so it's, i think it's bottom tree the subclass celestial night hop for that massive damage it's no problem you know you're in no rush now because we need to have a super before we get to the boss that's a lie you need to have 95 percent of your super before you get to the boss 90 95 percent but i wanted my full super before i i done anything so it's one less thing I have to be looking for. So when we get to here, the Arboretum, I, I'm probably not saying that right. That doesn't even sound like a word. The Arboretum? It's something like that. There's going to be a wanted enemy here. I'm not going to bother with it. I find it quite strange, even though as a strike, we're doing the quest version of it, that we still have to put up with wanted enemies. Like, there's not enough to kill in this strike. So we're going to wait for... the. the when this wanted enemy says, it's, 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 you know, when it says it's almost escaped, I'm kind of thinking to myself, listen, I'm letting you go. You know, don't throw it back in my face. <laughs> don't try and escape. Why are you trying to escape? I'm not attacking you. Just escape. Just go. Let me kill these exploders. So she'll push into the next room. If she doesn't go there straight away, She'll come to where we, this section just above us, behind, just behind us. She'll normally push to there. So I put a couple of shots just to, just to scare her. I'm going to scare her with a couple of bygones pulse rifle shots. And then wait for her to move. And these, the explosives will push you. You don't have to push them. So we want the super energy. We want, want to build this up. So we're just going to wait here. Obviously, we've no. We've no uh, radar, so we can't scan the area and say, oh, yep, there we go. There's one over there, because we don't know. So the wanted enemy has now escaped. There's normally an exploder just up here. Uh, and and I thought, actually, I just thought I caught it out the corner of my eye. It wasn't, it was this X, but I'd never really noticed a blue X there before. So, cut a long story short. <laughs> nice creative editing there that's the death out the way we roughly got the same ammunition we're missing I think two sniper shots and we've got our super I will, I will point out where we are you know when we get to the part I died at so come in come up to this rock shoot the crystal and get three I've got I've got the catalyst so three whispered breathing snipe shots on the boss and then look down here for the thrill you, there will be six thrill now, you want four of them to push you, because if they don't, if only two push you, it means when you start shooting, the other two will more than likely come. So you want to kill four of them, then put four energy shots on, and then your golden gun. Once you've done that, you take this knight. You want to take one of the knights. Don't take the other one, because the next knight you kill, when you kill these two knights, it activates the boss again. Kill the other two throw. That's the sixth throw that came out originally. They're all dead. Four of them pushed me and two always go down and hide down there. And then start picking away at the ads. Now the areas that I'm going to be attacking the ads from are probably the safest areas to attack from. This right hand, this left hand side next to this rock, we get nearly all the ads from there. Now, there's a little rock on your right. You'll see me jumping on top of it, jumping it behind it. When if the ads hide, just do a bit of a jump, it normally brings them out. So that's all the ads that we can get from that side. So we 
just traverse round. There'll always be two ads over on the right. There's normally another one behind that rock. And the way you'll know if there's one there is you'll... If he doesn't throw a big solar bomb like that, you'll see his shadow. You can actually see the shadows from from on the floor. He's just to the left of the rock. I can just see the top of his head now. We move the reticle over. We can get him. So that's, we think that's all the ads. So what I'm going to do is exactly what got me killed the last time, is I'm going to push around the map. Uh, but the one thing I didn't have, I'm pushing around the map, obviously, to get orbs, because we need our super for this next section. We must have our super before we attack the knight, or be very close to getting it. It's very important. So as you can see, Savathun is under half, so we do not need to put as much damage on her this time. We don't need three shots from the Whisper. I have accidentally, on more than one occasion, killed Savathun before the end of the strike, and I've had to do it all over again, because it finishes the strike, but no thorn, because you have to kill the, these two giant knights at the end. So what we're going to be looking to do is we're going to kill this knight, then we're going to go over underneath where Savathun is now. We're going to put two whisper shots on her when she teleports to this center section. Then we're going to take out the thrall that are pushing us. There's two thrall that will push. Pop with super and put the super on her in her second, second DPS uh, location. So we'll put two whisper on her here. Two whisper crit. Two. And then we're checking for the thrall. Making sure, so I could see him coming, but I needed, I needed to put it on her. So the, 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 the cluster, the scout grenade, I can't remember what it's called on the hunter, off the top of my head. The, the solar kind of scout grenade, if that's what it's called. Swarm, the swarm grenade. I dropped the swarm grenade at the bottom of the stairs, so that it would kind of put off the throw from charging, because that, that swarm grenade will kill both of them. Now what you've done with Savathun is very interesting. What you've done with Savathun is once you clear this area, that's who we were looking for, you've got to take out the Thrall. I'm looking for the Thrall. There's still Thrall lying about because I think there's six of them that come out when... The, so we had two of them. There might be more, actually. Very close to dying there. If you have to, do not be scared to melee them. And another thing that I've got on my my uh, cloak is orbs. Orbs are like give me health. I I I, th I thought it, I, I thought it'd be very important for this, and it turned out saved me a few times. So we're just going to take out the the ogres. There's two ogres that will go all ac across that left hand side, and we'll put one on the back one. So we take the two ones out on the left. Because my sniper's got Rampage on it, if I'd have attacked that, if I'd have put that shot on that last ogre, when I have Rampage propped, it would have it would have started the D, the DPS phase, which we're not ready for. So just, you don't have to, you could put a couple of bodies just to, you know, a body shot won't kill him. But just take some of his health off him, because we only want to hit him once, and then go straight to DPS. So, but we have to clear this area. So... As I say, jumping, bush jumping normally brings ads out. Uh, shooting next to wherever they're in cover. So we know we've got some at the back, so we're going to go round to the right. Don't push too far because we know the ogre's over there. So now we'll go back round the other side and see if we can get a bead on these last couple. If not, you can push over to, you can push over to that side. This is where I died the first attempt at this, the first first attempt at, at this run, was where I'm shooting those acolytes, there was a orb of light there, and I needed it for my super, and I thought I'd led the ogre away from my position, and pushed, went for the orb, and got wiped. So, what, the way I've done this, the way I've, the way I've actually done this uh, mission, is the way I do it, the times that I've tested it, it's, it works every time. Take the ogre down, switch to your whisper. When you hear, any time you hear the, the, the shrieker going for you, just dodge. Don't shoot, 
the Shrieker. Because you'll kill the Shrieker and that will be the end of it. Pop your Golden Gun, which you want to make sure you've got before you attack the last wizard, the, the last ogre. And now you're left with a giant, a giant knight on the other side of the rock, which is the, kind of the hardest thing, and this wizard. And you're going to have, periodically, you're going to have constant thrall attacking you. Periodically. So what I would suggest, because we need to change now. We don't need to change just yet. What am I talking about? Don't change. You need to keep, well, you do. <laughs> of course you do. <laughs> you need to change. Uh, did you guys notice that firefly? That happens quite a lot. When you change to, to the void, change subclass, it seems to give your next shot. I noticed it used to do that on the on the hand cannon. On my hand cannon, uh, the Midnight Coup. Uh, so, anyway, I've changed bottom tree of the subclass for Night Stalker. Now, I don't know if you noticed I've done it in stages. Change your subclass first, and then make sure you're not being pushed by a by Thrall, because it will happen. And then, once you've killed those Thrall, change change your uh, your helmet from Celestial Nighthawk to Celestial Nighthawk to the Graviton Forfeit. Because you want you want the invisibility. Now, just to answer a question before it even comes up. Why go bottom tree of the subclass? Because obviously top tree has the dodge reload that puts you invisible. Because dodge reload lasts about four or five seconds. The smoke lasts for about seven or eight seconds. And with Graviton Lance, it lasts nine, close to ten seconds. Eight, nine seconds. So it's about seven seconds without Graviton. Seven seconds invisible without it. Dodge reloads four seconds without it. Five seconds with. So uh, smoke makes you go invisible for nearly, with Graviton forfeit, nearly ten seconds. Which is more than enough time to get from your cover across to slam the orb. Because this is the big problem. I've been in this position where I am now tons of times. Now as you can see, we've done the exact same thing that we were doing for the ads. Either register shots on the ground around where he is. If you can't, if you can't, now bows don't work. I've noticed that bows don't activate the ads. Killing ads close to the, the, the enemy does. Now, you can try and encroach out. Uh, you can try and encroach the, out to that rock just in front of us. Not the rock we're at, the next rock down on the left. You can push to there, come back. But you just take so much damage from the Shrieker. This is probably the most boring part of the strike <laughs> mission. Because you're just waiting to get shots on that big knight that's behind, behind the... the, the where Savathan is to start with that mound. He's on the other side of that. You'd have seen him pop out a couple of times. But he will, regardless of what you do, he will eventually come out. You don't have to do anything if you don't want. I keep trying to activate him with shots. And as you can see, there he is. Get the whisper breathing. Got two shots on him. And then, but that that's the thing. Regardless, doesn't matter where you go. Get shots on him. Thrall will start encroaching you. You have to be careful. You, because if you get the two thrall and you, you, you kind of, oh my god, what am I gonna do? They'll just come up and wipe you. Even if it means shooting one and meleeing the other, or trying to melee both. There's been times. There may even be a time in this run where I melee both of them, because I've just I've, I've been looking elsewhere and they've managed to push up on me. But that's why I would suggest more than a single shot. Because if you're trying to do too much at the one time, single shot weapons, that that's the payoff. It's big damage. It's big damage when you're uh, firing them. For a primary, it's big damage. But the payoff is if you miss, that enemy is so much closer. Especially if it's a runner, like these throw. They're so much closer to you by the time you get your second shot off. So I personally decided that I... And I and and it goes. Oh, I nearly got him there. He just peeked out, put a shot, and then off. Some of my heavy and energy I'm, and weapons I'm dropping, but because of the nature of the strike, a the nature of it, b the difficulty of it, and c what was on offer, what was the pay, 
Or what was the point of doing it? I didn't feel any urge to rush. I've, much like some of you guys, I've, I have actually, when I started doing it, I see not, I, I look to see, once I've had a couple of goals, I look to see if there's any runs like it out there. Uh, I don't do it with nightfalls and stuff like that because I learnt all of them a long time ago. But because of the nature of this, I wanted to get it out as quickly as possible. And I seen a run where a guy was using slightly different tactic to me, set up class, all that type of stuff. My run's nothing like his. Not because it's better or anything. A run's a run. If you beat it, it's a good run. He just was using different weapons and a different subclass. And I... I I personally probably wouldn't have done it the way he done it. But uh, what it made me straight away when I was watching it was like, oh, he's using a hand cannon. That's not working too well for him. And the run's really good because he got it done. So that obviously it's a really good run. But it, it kind of made me it cemented it, reinforced. That's what it done. It reinforced my view that hand cannon's not the best thing for this. So for the just for Joe Public, use something with a, a, a better fire rate because it's more forgiving in clutch situations. That's the point. It's more forgiving in clutch situations. Plus, a hand cannon wouldn't be able to reach that far. You know, unless it's the Not Forgotten or the Luna, which can seem to be able to fire across a, a map into the next map and kill you when you're not even playing that game mode. Um, okay, I'm, I'm joking, but you guys get what I'm saying, right? So, there we go. He's pushed out a bit more, so this is us. When he pushes out that far, it's never a good thing for him. So, what we have to do now is we have to get down there and collect that orb. So what we've got is we're going to move between the rocks and once we get here, throw the throw the smoke on the ground, grab the orb, and then we're going to make it back up there. Now, you probably will notice, and it's one of the complaints against smoke, that Savathun can still track you. She tracked me, quite simply, because I went invisible in her eye line. That's what happened. I went invisible in her eye line. So I decided here to change to a bow. My, my trusty Subtle Calamity, if you have something that's void, that's not the Subtle Calamity, then switch to that. So we're going to try and get a shot, if we can, on this wizard over on the other side. Now, take all the time you need. There's no, there's no rush. But let me tell you something. If you rush it, you'll die. As you can see, you take massive damage. So what, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to try and take this first wizard. And then what we're going to do is we're going to just get Savathun to track us to the other side of the rock. Just to give us that second extra. Track me over here. And then I'll go straight over. It's just an extra second just to break our shield. And there we go. That's all you need. And then kill her. So, all that's left to do now is to get to the bottom and slam. So what we're going to do is go between the different rocks, the different pieces of cover. And then I'm going to show you even better, even better than dying. <laughs> I'm going to show you how this can, you know, how this can be tricky. Because when you used to dodge reloading and picking the orb up, it's very, it seems like very fluid. So I threw my, I threw the invisibility. I didn't, I threw the invisibility and Savathun seen me go invisible. Right? So she'll track you in your invisibility if she sees you go invisible. So we're halfway towards one melee. As I say in the video, that's not the way to do it. You have to go invisible when she's not looking at you. Even then, because you've got a bush jump, she will still track you. Now, the biggest issue here, and it was something I never recognized when I was doing it, is she knows where I am now. So she's firing on my position. It's worthwhile to be invisible in cover and go to your next cover invisible so that she loses sight of you. But 
it just seems like she can really track you really well, even when you're not invisible, even when you're invisible. So you'll see here it works a little bit better. I I don't get smashed going for, going this time. So we'll drop the orb. We're going to throw the melee as soon as that platform's in position. So we're invisible. Pick the orb up. As you can see, she was tracking me for a bit. And she nearly kills me. I managed to just get away. Pull out the sniper. Two shots. And there you go, guys. That is my take on how to solo this. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you appreciate the video, guys. Check out any of the other videos on the channel. If you enjoyed it, leave a like. If you have any questions, leave a comment. Thank you. Your, what you guys view in the video is always just enough for me. So thanks a lot for your time. And I will see you guys in the next video.